You're listening to the Ones Ready Podcast, a team of Air Force Special Operators forged in combat with over 70 years of combined operational experience, as well as a decade of selection instructor experience. If you're tired of settling and you want to do something you truly believe in, you're in the right place. Now here's your favorite CCT personality, JTAC extraordinaire, embracer of the ridiculous face, and like the shortest operator you'll ever meet, Peaches. Hey everybody, welcome to the Ones Ready Podcast. You're in the team room. Today we want to talk to you guys about your training regime and when you happen to hit plateaus, specifically with your running. So how do you get your your run times down, how do you get quicker, and all that kind of good stuff, right? Everybody hits plateaus, so don't worry about it. Uh, it's just a matter of what you do to, you know, in, increase an improvement or, or bust through that, that barrier, right? So before we talk about it and go into depth with all the guys here, uh, we're brought to you guys by Alpha Brew Coffee and Strike Force Energy. If you go over to their websites and enter the promo code ONES READY, you guys will be able to get a sweet deal on some swag. So again, how do we, you know, improve? Once we hit a plateau or a barrier in our training regime, whether it be running, bench press, squatting, deadlifting, anything within our our training regime right once we hit that plateau how do we bust through it and continue to improve especially if we haven't met the standards or or the end goal that we want to get to right so there are ways to do that and we're going to talk about today but first we're going to go over to Aaron Aaron you were an instructor what are some of the pitfalls and bad habits that you would see from students when they would come to you uh, whether it was as they were preparing for their their pipeline or maybe while they were in the pipeline and in between schools or something like that? Yeah, so the number one, and th- this is a big thing for me, right, is never switching it up. So guys are like, oh, I've been running the same mile and a half, the same two mile, the same three mile, and I'm not increasing on my time. So you, you kind of dig into it a little bit deeper. And you're like, all right, well, well, what are you doing to get there? And they're like, well, I'm just running a mile and a half. Or I'm just running two miles. I'm running three miles. I'm trying to get as fast as I can. Listen, you got to switch it up. So all of the top level strength and conditioning coaches, all these people that are on the cutting edge of fitness for a lot of the things they're doing things. Like when you look at NFL athletes, like go all the way back NFL athletes, what do they do? They put them in ballet. They put them in something they're worth. They're using their bodies that aren't the same for the thing that are actually training for in order to shore up those weaknesses. Right? So for me, it was the same thing. Like I've always been a hard gains runner. I can be a good runner if I try at it, but to be honest with you, I hate it so badly. <laughs> like I hate, I hate running for any amount of long distance. So but all my friends know this, like, cardio is hardio. I don't like doing those things. Like it's not, it's not one of the things that I enjoy. Right. But one of the things I do enjoy is strength and conditioning drills that are spoke like focused on, um, turning or cutting speed ladders. If you're doing full field suicides, when you're talking about running, like, you know, 10 meters, touching a line, coming back 20 meters, touching a line, coming back those things that you need to switch up and kind of alter your routine can have really, really good gains. Um, doing things like Faster running, slower running, you know, for a, a thing for me that we were talking before we even got on here was was pace running, like your race pace. So I had a coach that was really good that said, hey, you want to get to six miles and you want to be able to run at a seven-minute pace, why don't you run a seven-minute pace for one mile and start there? And once you get through that gate, then go to the next gate, then run seven miles for uh, or a seven-minute mile for a mile and a half, seven-minute mile for two miles. Every once in a while, spicing those things up into your workout, getting those sprints in, doing those hill sprints, doing those things that are really cardio intensive but might not necessarily be running. I know for me, when I hit a plateau, that was really important for me. Number one, for the mental break, because I'm not just running, I'm not just pounding pavement and like constantly failing. Like that was always really demoralizing to me. Was I'm not getting any faster, and that can kind of play into your headspace too. Is right. Uh, as well, right? So one of the things that I like to do is just do something else. Just go on nothing but a sprint day. Nothing but I'm going to run only an eight mile pace, but I'm going to run five times longer today or whatever is appropriate for you to avoid injury. I'm going to run three times longer today than I normally do. Today's my one mile day. I'm going to run four miles. I'm going to back the pace off and I'm really just going to take the clock away and and not worry about it. So um, a couple of things for me, I, I think the number one thing for me that I saw for students is just repeating the same behavior over and over and over again. They're like, I'm not getting any faster at my one and a half mile. Okay, well, what are you running? Well, I'm just running the one and a half mile. Man, <laughs> run, run a 400 
at a pace that you don't think you can touch. Like you, maybe you're a seven minute mile or pace. Like that was me. I ran every, every single like evaluated run. I didn't run very much faster than about a six thirty pace. Cause I just couldn't, I'm just, I'm a bigger dude. I don't run that fast. Um, but you know what I did do is every once in a while to spice it up, I'd be like, okay, well I'm going to run a 200, but I'm going to run a 200 at a straight up six minute pace. Like I'm going to get after it. I'm going to go run hard. So I think for one, the, the number one thing I saw from students especially was just doing the same thing over and over again. Step out of your routine, add some different stresses, try to really push yourself in those shorter distances and try to get those sprints in. Um, try to get those those different paced runs in. And then, you know, make sure I'd say number two for me is make sure you know your pace. I've given a lot of evaluations to people where I'm like, hey, you were running at like an eight minute pace. And they were like, oh, I thought I was running way faster. I thought I had plenty of time. Unless you're out on the clock and you're figuring out, no kidding, this is what it feels like to run this pace, you're not going to know. So I think those are my two my two big ones, Peach. What else you got? No, I mean, I, I agree completely. And I'm actually glad that you brought up the whole pace thing because if not, I was going to bring it up or at least ask you about it. But you know, like it, I know we were kind of BSing about it before the podcast, but the amount of people that that don't actually know their pace and the, and the bad thing is that they're, they are training for the pipeline that you know, there are milestones that have to be hit. And, and it just kind of blows my mind that you wouldn't at least identify, hey, this is my pace right now. I'm running a 730. I know I need to get the sub seven. Like even, even that kind of knowledge would be fantastic. But to just go in blindly, I mean, that's, that's ballsy. Yeah, See how it works I- out for him, Cotton. I'll be out. Yeah, exactly. And I'll be honest with you. I've, I've been on runs. I'll be like, all right, cool. Let's go. Let's go talk about it when we're on a run. I know what my pace is, but again, it's because I'm not a good runner. I know exactly how I feel when I'm at 7:30, when I'm at seven minutes, when I'm at faster than that. I know exactly like how hard I can push it, how how much I need to kind of bring it back. So when I'm having a conversation with somebody at a pace that they say, oh, I can run this all day, and they're <laughs> huffing and puffing, and I'm like, hey, you can't. I think, <laughs> We, we have a problem, bud. You know, that's what I, that's kind of usually where I go. So, and again, for me, not a good runner, never have been. I, I, I do not like running. Um, I can be good at it when I focus on it, but thank goodness to those Northeast Ohio jeans. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's good, man. That's good input. So Brian, I'm sure, you know, uh, in your training, when you were doing, when you were an instructor and also, you know, as you were training for the pipeline and once you got on team, you absolutely hit a plateau because I know all three of us have, everybody hits them. So what were one of the plateaus that you hit, um, specific to running? And then like, what did you do specifically to, you know, overcome that or break through that barrier? Yeah. So Jared, I mean, a lot of the things that, you know, I saw as an instructor and I've experienced through the time that I've been conditioning, because I, I ran track and cross country whenever I was kind of in high school and that whole thing, because that was my like foundation kind of thing when I was a, a lot younger and a lot lighter, you know, I was 140 or whatever. <laughs> and that, that helped you me. Weren't, you weren't the mass of a man but, you are now <laughs> <laughs> with that well, steely jaw and then barrel chest. <laughs> Exactly. No, but it was way a lot more. The uh, important thing here is that, you know, when you're back there and you're training for cross country, you're training just to run that specific three mile or two mile or whatever. You're not training to do all these other things that like functional fitness wise that you need to also be able to do. So I think that's an important aspect to keep in mind. Like you're not going to just try and go for a five minute mile and then let your push ups and let your uh, rucking and all that other stuff fall the wayside. So that's a, a really important thing to keep keep in mind. And if you were those, one of those guys that were just, you know, deadlifting 600 pounds or whatever, but you can't run and you're 190 pounds. Like that was what I was going to talk about. You know, I got up to on one of the deployments, 180 something. And I was just way too heavy for being able to run for my friend. Cause I'm not a big dude. Like we were talking about, I'm not huge or anything like that, but <laughs> having that extra weight on my frame, just even you know, the addition of five pounds or whatever would really take away from my ability to run. And I was not able to run under like a sub eight at that point. So, um, like keeping in mind all the factors of the things that are required of you, uh, especially with the past test in mind and with grad standards that are going to be changing, um, 
just know that you're you're shooting for that functional. So back to like what Aaron was saying and Peach, you want to add in those sprints so you can actually perform the things that are going to be asked of you. Because you're going to be doing grassing reels, you're going to be doing, you know, rucking, and you're going to have to sprint to cover and do all that kind of stuff with kit on and gear on. So you need to be able to do those functional things. And, you know, leads me into my next thing. You need to find your functional weight. So for me, and I know all of you guys have the same thing. You've experienced it. Like, you know, if I go up to this, this weight, you know, I'm a little bit too heavy. If I go down this too low, then I'm a little too weak. So, you know, for me, like 175 is a pretty good functional weight to be able to have the strength to, to running and cardio ratio, you know, based on your frame, figure out whatever it is. And, uh, kind of go towards that. So diet's a huge thing on that. And then as far as plateaus, same thing like you guys are talking about. If you're over there just running, you know, 1.5 miles to do a 1.5 mile race, you're not going to get any better. You're not going to get anything different out of that. I, I usually run like, um, so kind of my run week looks like running on Monday. Um, usually it's a more difficult workout, like some kind of interval work. And then Wednesday will be a more calm, like three miles or whatever kind of thing. Friday, again, intervals. And then one day over the weekend, whichever I have more time for, um, it's like an eight mile run. And that's just like a tempo, get my straight up pace in there and know what that feels like. And know it like usually around eight minutes, what I do for eight miles. So I'll just get, get in exactly what, you know, the distance, keep that same pace and don't stop running. That's one of the key things also <laughs> is guys get used to having that break. Like you get, you know, t- guys take break every mile or something like that. And then if you're doing a three mile at crow selection or something, you're going to expect your body's going to expect to have that break whenever you come up onto the mile. So, you know, practice that and make sure you don't give yourself that break so you can pass through it whenever you actually come time for the test. So those are the really key things that kind of get me through some of the uh, plateaus that I've had in the past is just that diet and making sure I find my functional weight. And then like you guys are talking about varying up your training and making sure you're getting in that aerobic capacity as well as the sprint capacity kind of thing. No. Yeah. And I, I agree. And I like the fact that you actually added in, you know, recovery or kind of, uh, because a lot of people, every single time they go out and run, they just, they hammer it as fast as they can, you know, uh, whether it's, you know, if they're doing a three mile run, they just go keep going and going and they never one, they never sprint, you know, or do sprints, but also they never do a recovery run or an active recovery event. And that's going to end up hurting them in the long run. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I I would say, and I'll leave with three things for, for me, uh, and both you guys brought it up strength training, right? Um, Hey, it's great that I can run all the time, but I've got to throw in some kind of strength to help build the muscle. Um, I, I think that's important. I also think yoga is important, um, and I think it is often overlooked and maybe even frowned upon in the soft community, but I think as we're get starting to get out of here, <laughs> get out of here, what, man, we're supposed to like, uh, we're supposed to pay homage to the patron saint of podcasting, right? Joe Rogan said that yoga is a martial art that you do against yourself. You actually, you're, you're completing things that you never thought your body could do in an hour session mobility durability yoga so important and it's so underlooked like people just man when was the last time you saw a lion stretch to go get his prey get out of here with that yeah you're that not you're not a not, lion you're, you're not, not a lion, lion son. <laughs> you're, a you're a human like <laughs> i've heard that so many times like yeah no kidding get out of here i'm not a lion i'm a, I'm a person i'm a human of course, I can't hot go yoga, and do that. I'll tell you what, if there's one, you want to change your week Ooh. in one session, go to hot yoga to start your week off. Hit that bad boy on a Sunday or a Monday. See how your week feels different. You, better, you better pack some water, though. <laughs> hey, you better pack a lunch, guy. I'm trying to get out here and work. Yeah. Uh, okay, so the third one, though, and and I know we've, we've said, hey, vary up stuff, but I, I actually want to leave the listeners with a no kidding workout, right? So... If you, if the listeners are, and you guys can try this obviously, but since we're not running right very much, right, Aaron? <laughs> <laughs> hey, there, there's a lot of jujitsu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not a lot of running in one direction, dog. <laughs> that's just that's my mind state. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I am getting my cardio, and it's important. I do run a little bit more now. Well, that's all right. I, I got Maggie, and I don't want her to get fat. So, <laughs> and, and so everybody knows Maggie's my German Shepherd, right? It's not like I'm talking about somebody. <laughs> How yeah. dare you? Yeah, I know. How dare you? So here's what I want to leave with you guys. And it's a, it's a, 
it's a quick 12 minute workout, right? And it's a Tabata sprint workout. So you do four minutes warm up at a nice, just relaxing kind of pace just to get warmed up, right? And then for four minutes, you're going to do eight rounds of 20 seconds on and 10 seconds off. Now that 20 seconds on is an all out 100% sprint as fast as you can go. And then once you hit, once that 20 seconds is over and you start that 10 minute rest, it is literally a walk. You just walk and then 10 seconds goes by and then it's go time again. 20 seconds on, 100%. So you're going to do that eight times. It equals four minutes, right? And then for the final four minutes, it's just a nice cool down so that you don't just, you know, do sprints and then all of a sudden you stop doing something. So it's a, if you're short on time or you want to change up your regime and just give it a shot and it'll help you get faster and it'll, it'll build some, you may even have that little that kind of dry cough at the end of it as well. I know sometimes I do, depending on where I do this workout, but um, short on time and it'll get you quick. So um, that's what I'd throw out there. I don't know if you guys have any quick ones you want to you want to throw in there. I know, Brian, you've got a bunch from uh, How to Be a PJ. Yeah, so I got to, you know, you guys can check out the, the workouts that I have at howtobeapj.com. Um, the biggest things that I do for you, I do some of the tempo runs like you were talking about, you know, just doing the 10, 20 second kind of intervals and, you know, slowing down at uh, 50% to 80% kind of thing. And that is really important. Um, another thing that is really, you know, really helps me whenever I plateaued was running on hills. So if you go and find a hill somewhere and then you find one that's hopefully about one to 200 meters at least, and then you can time yourself based on that interval and then see how long it takes you to get up to the top give yourself about 30 seconds of rest if you're doing like a 200 meter type of thing and then you start again on the next 30 seconds after you rest so keep on doing that and then build yourself up you know on those hills because that is really key especially if you're building up your rucking strength we'll talk about rucking in a future episode and then for these uh exercises like the one that peach just said make sure that you check down below on the website if you go to onesready.com you click on the episode and you look below on the show notes you can check out that actual workout that peach was just saying Yep. So we Absolutely. write all the important stuff down there and the highlights from each episode. So you guys can go down there and check it out. Um, the other thing that I would say is, like I said, get in there and get a distance. I'm a big believer and I've been doing it for, I don't know how many years now, just running six to eight miles one day out of the week. And that keeps up your cardio. Even if you have no time to do any other like type of running, once you build yourself up to maintain, you can you can do a decent job by doing like six to eight miles each week. Um, we'll talk about shin splints and all that other stuff that comes with, uh, and the injuries that come with running and doing all this in a future episode that's recovery, but recovery in general, make sure you guys are stretching and foam rolling. Like these are guys we're talking about. Like it doesn't have to always be yoga. You don't have to like show up every day for hot yoga or whatever, but stretching is key to making sure that you're ready to go and perform and you don't break something later on when you go and do the sprints especially kind of thing uh that being said dynamic stretches before you actually perform and then static stretching once all of your stuff is done and you are ready to stay stagnant after that or whatever so uh, static stretching after not before um so those are my uh key points for running on my end you got anything else peach no, so I want to, you know, thank the listeners for tuning in or watching us on the podcast. We really appreciate the support. The whole purpose behind this specific episode is because we've gotten a lot of questions about how do I get my runtime down. So I, I wanted to address it during this episode, and hopefully we've done that, and it'll help you improve your training regime. And if you've plateaued or hit any kind of barriers, it'll help you break through those. So, uh, Brian, you want to close us out? All right. So... You know, take all these uh, things that we said into consideration next time you go out for your run and you're planning your week. Uh, take at least one tip implemented into the program that you're writing for yourself or go check out any of the workouts that are that are out there. Um, you know, the thing that the common thing that we're talking about here is if you keep on doing the same thing, which is like the 1.5 mile run over and over and over again, you're not going to get any better. Uh, Albert Einstein once said the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. And that's kind of what you're doing if you are, like you said, doing that 1.5 mile over and over again. So make sure that that is not you. Vary up your training <laughs> and make sure you use all the, the resources out there that you have at your disposal on the internet 
Um, and then at onesready.com, you guys can check out all the uh, show notes and the episodes. Make sure you check out Peach's workout. If you do it, make sure you come over to the Instagram, drop us a note, let us know yeah. how you guys did it, and check out CCT Peaches. Hit them up, let them know how uh, you did it with that workout. So we appreciate you guys again listening to another episode. You guys have ideas or things that you want to hear us talk about. Make sure you hit us up. Let us know. Go to onesready.com. Check it out for these awesome shirts that we got. Try blend material. And then hit up our partners, Alpha Brew Coffee Company and Strike Force Energy for, and use the code onesready for a discount on that. So again, I appreciate you guys listening and um, watching if you're doing the YouTube thing. And leave us a comment. We will catch you next time. And go, make sure you go out there, get your run on, and earn each breath. All right, later, guys. See you. Later.